Would you like to put a stop to biological aging? I think we all would. Uh, what we've known so far regarding aging and increasing longevity is the fact that you can calorie restrict anything from a yeast to uh, a fruit fly to a mouse and to a human and expand their longevity so and, and reduce disease incidence as well. So that has been a nice standard datum that's been known for a very long time and proven over and over in research but sticky little point of we don't like to be hungry on a regular basis so it, it has its liabilities there has been research of late that's very exciting that shows we don't necessarily have to starve in order to extend our longevity so what we're looking at here is living longer healthier nobody wants to live longer sicker which is really what we're doing in this country is that for the most part uh, people are, are living a little bit longer, although the last two census on that is actually we're starting to live shorter these past two years. Uh, but generally speaking, our lifespan has been extending, but extending while being ill longer. So nobody's particularly interested in that. It's, we want to be vital and really living life and live long. So uh, what research has looked at is and discovered are some pathways in the human body that, that can extend or subtract longevity and either make you disease proof or put you at a liability for disease like cancer, diabetes, the degenerative diseases, depending on whether these pathways are turned on or off. Now, I have a blog that just um, got published on my site, which is rootcausemedical.com, which is called How to Put a Stop to Biological Aging. And I get into the science and I have all the references, so if you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty, it is all there for you. But, but right now, I just wanna give you the overview. And that is that they, we do have these pathways. They have been very validated with science. And heretofore, uh, those pathways have been sort of sublimated, if you will, by calorie restriction. Okay, given we don't like to starve, so is there another option? And some researchers uh, looked at what about calorie restriction, this was very smart of them, what about calorie restriction actually turned off these pathways? And it turned out it, was, it had to do with protein. So these pathways were uh, stimulated by protein, but even better, they found that it was certain amino acids in protein. Uh, the two they came up with, one is called leucine, and this is a branch chain amino acid, so just remember that. It's just sort of how the structure of the amino acid looks. There's three branch chain amino acids, but leucine is one, and the other amino acid, it was not a branch chain, is called methionine. So the, the key point here is that, all right, so now we're down to real specifics. We don't want excess protein, good. We really don't want excess methionine and leucine begs the question where do you find those two uh, they are predominantly in animal foods meats eggs cheese etc uh, in the blog I go through a list of I don't list out a thousand foods but uh, I look at in a thousand foods from highest to lowest of each of these amino acids where the first plant shows up and it's about um, two hundredth place and then going down from there. So uh, these, these amino acids are not rich in um, plant-based products. Now beans is something that is uh, very rich in diets of centenarians, people who live a long time, the Mediterranean diet. So some of the healthier diets uh, tend to consume a lot of beans and beans had been chastised in the past because they were very low in methionine. But it turns out that cancer really likes methionine. So you can take cancer, uh, they started with just putting cancer cells in a petri dish, human cells, and putting them on a restricted methionine diet. So the gel that, that they're, they're in, so what the cells are being fed basically, low methionine. And the cancer cells not only don't thrive, they die. So um, beans that have been chastised for their low methionine uh, level now it's like, oh, no wonder they're considered an anti-cancer food. Because of this, it's not really a deficiency, they're just low in this amino acid that tends to promote uh, cancer and um, lower life expectancy. 
So um, the other aspect of this that I wanted to share with you had to do with um, this longevity profile and how these, so there's certain pathways that I go over. I'm not going to give you the names, but they're in the blog. Um, but these pathways are growth pathways. So these are pathways that when you're young and you're growing, they allow you to grow. As a matter of fact, one pathway, it's called mTOR, the way they found it was in uh, discovering people in Ecuador who are very short of stature. These are people who as adults are under four feet tall. And um, it turns out that they had a, uh, I'm sorry, there's, there's mTOR and there's IGF-1. Uh, I was confusing the two. So these are both growth pathways, but in these particular Ecuadorians, they had a genetic defect where they couldn't bind this IGF-1, which is short for insulin-like growth factor. So all of these pathways are growth factors as I mentioned. So these particular people have a genetic defect so that's why they don't grow but they're also pretty much immune to disease even though they have a terrible diet. So I know a lot of you are like, oh I can eat whatever I want. <laughs> Not unless you're these very rare group of probably 300 humans on the planet that have this rare growth factor. So they're under four feet tall in stature, but because they don't have this uh, particular pathway that can be engaged as they get older, they're eating a poor diet and there's still, there's unheard of that anybody would get cancer or heart disease, et cetera. So these growth factors, which are really helpful when you're young, not so uh, great when you're older because as we're, we age and we've reached puberty and we've stopped growing, we don't want a lot of growth of cells. We have adult cells now, so what those growth factors, if you're stimulating them, what you're stimulating is potentially cancer and other cells that you don't want to stimulate because they're creating disease. So that's where the growth factors come in. And one health hack I wanted to give you is if you are a protein powder consumer, whether you're plant-based or animal-based. Um, if you're animal-based, you really want to think about decreasing the amount of protein you consume. Uh, but even if you're plant-based, if, if your protein powder adds extra amino acids, you want to stay away from that because usually it's a protein powder that's, that's talking about you know muscle, mus increasing muscle mass for athletes, etc. And they tend to have high levels of the methionine, leucine, um, those two. And then there's, as I mentioned earlier, there's three branch chain amino acids. So they'll have leucine, isoleucine, and valine. But if they're adding them, so if you have a pea-based protein powder, uh, plant-based, and you just and they don't add anything to it, it's totally fine. But if they've added extra amino acids, you're almost turning a plant-based protein into an animal-based protein, and you've got that potential liability with these um, with these aging pathways and disease pathways. So. I hope this was interesting for you. It really is. We're getting a lot of research coming out that uh, we eat too much protein. We eat too much animal-based protein. Uh, research is saying 10% of our calories is protein, uh, probably plenty. And then the profile is really what it's about. So the plant-based proteins have a better profile than the animal-based because they're not high in those particular amino acids. So something to consider. And I hope you found this useful. Please uh, join my channel. I'd love for you to do that and then share this video with others. And most importantly, if your health is not the way you want it to be, please reach out for a free consultation. That is ultimately why we are here, is to help you get healthy. So give us a call at 408-733-0400 and we can do a free phone consultation whether you're local or live at a distance. I'll see you next time.